Hello, my name is Dr. Michael Okereke. Um, welcome to my channel, this Getting Started with Modeling channel. The object of this um, video is for compression test. Compression test is about running a simulation on compression test specimen. And the specimen type that we are focusing on today is a cylindrical specimen. So a cylindrical specimen. Of course, you've got different type of specimens and dimensions and geometries that you can use for a compression test. But this focus for this video is on cylindrical specimen. Compression test is absolutely important because this is how you extract properties of materials in engineering mechanics. So the, to carefully design the specimen, to carefully design the experiment, to extract properties from them is a skill. Um, and the objective of this video is to use simulation as a way of uh, exploring the implications of this design on and carrying out of the experiment and that's what I, I want to do today so if I just go over to the PowerPoint slide that I've prepared you know to go together with this video so we start first with what a typical compression specimen would look like so basically in this case we're looking at cylindrical specimen so it would look like like that a cylindrical specimen that looks like this with a defined diameter and a defined length in this case there is a roller support attached to to it I'm using a ruler support here to represent a case where the specimen has been perfectly lubricated in which case I mean the base is fully lubricated in which case there is a uniform expansion in a lateral sense in a transverse direction so in this case you've got a good expansion on the sample so both at the top and the bottom there is an effective lubrication which means when a force is applied the sample is evenly expanding in in the lateral direction which is what you expect in a good compression test and experiment of course that may not always be achievable so what you would tend to have is a case where let's say a student forgets to lubricate the base so in which case the base would not be able to expand freely so in that case there is um, a fix it can be simulated as a fixed support some measure of fixed support so the aim really of what I want to achieve here is to use simulation to demonstrate the impact of these choices in terms of how you design the compression test specimen and, and, and how you design the experiment. Of course, there will be a force attached, you know, that dis displaces the sample. So we can either use a displacement boundary condition, which I've got delta U here, or a force boundary condition to impose compressive behavior on this cylindrical specimen. So, if this is the kind of content that you like, please do subscribe to my channel and click the notification button so that when contents like this are created, you'll be the first to know about it. So, let's just carry on. Now, the virtual domain of the specimen will be a three-dimensional system with a diameter of 50 millimeters and a length of 120 millimeters. Now, the material is made from polypropylene, which is a kind of a plastic. Its Young's modulus is 1.308 GPa. The Poisson ratio is 0.4 and the yield stress is 40 megapascal. So we're going to be looking at three scenarios in our simulation, three boundary conditions uh, that can influence the way our, our result would, would, would pan out. So the first would be we're going to impose a 10% strain in all three cases. So we're going to deform this material up to 10% in a strain. Now the case one is where we're having to work on a good compression experiment. In which case there's a roller support at the base and there's a free expansion at the top and the sample evenly expands in all three dimensions in, in, the, in the in plane dimension so this is ideal this is what we want for a good sample and then we'll visualize what kind of result you get from that the second case is where let's say the student or the operator forgets to lubricate the base i mean the top end okay could be lubricated so is a no lubricated base or maybe a minuscule lubrication not an effective lubrication what effect would that have or even a worst case scenario where the sample this specimen just gets tested without any form of lubrication so we're going to model that as fixed support at the base and fixed support at the top so that's the objective of this exercise now there is an there is a challenge there is an implication to to running this model because if we're going to start with this the roller supported case there is nothing constraining the sample from sliding to the left and to the right as you compress it. So if there is a microstructural in, 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 you know, defect in the sample, it can cause it to begin to, to slide to the left and to the right. And that is not ideal. This is not what you want. So 
how do we prevent this free body sliding of the sample okay we're going to, so that's what we're going to look at how do you prevent free body drifting of the model in this case so what we're going to do is we're going to identify a center line in the sample and we're going to constrain it on a roller support so that it will allow vertical movement but no lateral expansion only on the center line not along anywhere in the sample this is really important because pure uniaxial deformation means that this center line doesn't experience any movement to the left or to the right at all so this is something we had to do and you know to to impose a pure uniaxial deformation on the sample so we anchor the center line of the model to force uniaxial deformation along the z-axis so just looking at the numbers involved again the boundary condition at 10 percent strain if we use our strain normal strain equation from mechanics of material the change of length divided by the original length so the change of length to correspond to a point one strain or 10 percent strain is 12 millimeters so we're going to impose a 12 millimeter displacement load on the sample to impose a strain of 10 percent we can also calculate the corresponding pressure load that will create that and that's what we have here so using this force displacement equation i select the pressure load which is force over area and then that gives us strain times young's modulus and that comes to 130.8 we're going to go to the abacus environment okay so this is the abacus environment where we're going to set up and run the simulations of course if you have a different software it will be you know you will use you'll be using exactly the same for you for your work I'm using a student version of Abacus, the 2020 Abacus Student Edition 2020. Um, if you're a student, then this is okay. Abacus gives you the software free. If you have a full license, of course, go ahead and use it. But I'm going to use a student version, and that will influence certain decisions I'm going to make in, in terms of how I mesh the model. So the first thing we need to do is to... Okay, so I'm going to call this a cylindrical um, spec. Okay, so it's going to be a 3D modeling space. It's deformable, which means stress will build up in the sample. It's a solid shape, so that's against being a hollow or a, a shell element, a shell, a shell based feature. And the extrusion is, is going to be created by extrusion. So I click continue. So it gets me into this sketching canvas where I need to sketch the cross section of the specimen that we're looking at. So if you look here at the top end here, we need to create the in-plane geometry of the circle using this create circle with center and perimeter. Now, what I tend to use is to specify the center directly as a coordinate position. At least I'm controlling what I'm doing. So this is a center of the circle and the other, the one of the edge on the circle is 25, 0. 25 on the X axis and 0 on the Y axis. So this gives me the circle, so center and that point. Um, I cancel procedure, right click cancel procedure and click done okay now at the top end here it comes up with what do you how do you want to create this extruded sample what is the end condition the end condition has to be up to a depth of 120 millimeters which is the depth the height of the sample that we want so we click OK so now this creates our specimen it creates our specimen so because I want to identify a center line, a center line in the sample where I'm going to apply this um, reinforcement, not reinforcement, a boundary condition to constrain it to move in a vertical line. So what do I do? So I'm going to use this partition to divide this up into four cases so that I'll have, so if you click on that, click on this, okay. Um, there are different ways you can do this. I'm going to use a three normal, okay. So the three normal will mean I need to select one point directly opposed to that point and then a third point in the, along the Z direction and then you create the partition. So that gives me a picture of the sample partitioned in two. So while that is still selected, it can ask for further. So I'm going to select all these cells. Again, I want to partition them. Select the three point now, create the ones that are at angle 90 to the original partition line so that creates that so we now have the sample created this way now what I can do what I can do is I'll 
isolate so I'm going to remove certain selected parts so let's say I remove so remember I use this button so if we click on that button so what is that button it says remove a certain selected part so I'm going to remove that to expose the inside but I'm not going to remove it based on faces I'm going to remove it based on cells so I'm selecting that selecting this and pressing down shift to do this multiple selection at the same time and then click done so this releases re reveals the center line so within the part module so if I go back to the part module under my specimen module as well I'm going to create a set okay double click on set so I'm going to call this the center line continue so what defines my set basically I hover across this and then tick select that center line so you hover again so select it and click done now I can check that out so if I go back to set select center line so it's clearly so that's done and then I replace all the parts that I don't want okay so you could say it, it's clearly defined what the center line is now I could then go ahead and uh, mesh this module so if you double click on the mesh mesh so first thing I need to do is to check how much seeding I want to use so let's work with a seed size of 8 it says 12 is acceptable so let's work with seeds um, with 8 for example um, so you click on this other button where you assign what kind of geometry you want to use so I select all of that so what kind of geometry I'm, I'm going to use a hexahedral structured no okay we can, we can do sweeping media like this mesh transition minimized again if you don't know about this to play around with the abacus documentation file so you know what you want then you can now mesh using this option so at the base here, I said okay do you want to mesh the part yes of course I want to mesh the part so I've got my domain created now I go back to this and then I need to tell you what material to model that domain with so I double click on the material the material enter on the material key um, and then it comes up with this so obviously I want to work on polypropylene my polypropylene will have um, an elastic property first which will be 1.308 Young's modulus 1.308 e to power 3 this is important the dimensions of my domain is in millimeters so my Young's modulus, Young's modulus need not be in Newton per meter squared which is Pascal but rather, rather in Newton per millimeter squared and so 1.308 times 10 to power 9 Newton per millimeter squared is 1.308 times 10 to power 3 Newton per millimeter squared so this is important because you want to keep dimensional consistency with the values that you put into the model so 0 0.4 goes into the model here as my Poisson ratio there is a yield stress attached to this material so the plastic yield will be modeled by elastic and the plastic so the yield stress will be 40 Newton per millimeter squared if it was in Pascal it would be 40 times 10 to power 6 Newton per meter squared but our specimen is in millimeters, so we specify everything in terms of Newton per millimeter squared. So 0, 0.0 is the plastic strain. Now, once we've done that, we click OK. So this is done. This is fine. Now, we need to go back and, 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 and create a section associated with the material. So if you double click on the section, so at the top here, I'm going to call this my PP section polypropylene section is still going to be a solid base feature with homogeneous type continue polypropylene is already pre-selected so we'll leave it there now I need to tell this cylindrical specimen that its property has to be that polypropylene so we'll do a section assignment so I double click on section assignment so it now comes into the window and says select the region you want to assign the section so I just select everything in this window okay so select that and click done so this is fine and we have the section selected 
we can't do that we've got the section selected um we've got our mesh the domain is meshed everything is all done so the next thing we have on this model three apart from cylindrical spec design the next thing we have on this model three is the assembly so we'll click on the instance to create the assembly instance accept what instance is given to us so this is fine um, the next thing we need to do as well is go down so we could worry create a step an analysis step so double click on step so this is loading step okay and it's a static general loading step and then you click continue okay so the left step has been created everything has been done we could think about the field output history output and all these other bits but not for now so what we're going to go straight into creating the boundary conditions for this domain so okay so next thing is to create the boundary condition so we'll click on bc which is that so we're going to call this roller support supported base. It's not going to be a step, it's an initial boundary condition of event displacement. Continue. So we use the rotation icon to rotate so we can review the base. Okay, cancel this procedure, press down shift, select multiple time. All the time pressing down shift and release shift the shift key so it gives us a window so we only want to constrain it in the third direction for a start so that we have a perfect um so we can go back to an isometric view so we we'll use the isometric view okay so now we need to do the same for the top so we need to apply a load at the top so load at the top so it's no more an initial boundary condition initial step with actually loading step so that it will be a static general loading step displacement will still be accepted continue so now it says okay do you want to select the regions that you want i press down shift select again multiple regions associated with this Right, so we've selected those bases then we click done now where does that go so it's a third axis that we're interested in 12 we're going to make it minus 12 because it's a compression test that we're doing okay so it's going in the compressive direction pushing this statement this system inward so if it was plus then it will create a tensile test which is a different problem that's not what we are dealing with at the moment okay so everything we need in this model is done so we can set up the first case so they'll click on jobs okay so i'm going to call this job you know case case one okay comp test case one case i one okay and then we'll submit the job uh, we will create the job open the window here and then right click and submit so we submit the job and it will run and once it's run as it's running it's updating us on what is going on within the model around here so we're gonna wait for the model to finish running Okay, the model has run and he has completed and it gives us information saying that okay the abacus input processes file was completed successfully and they use the abacus standard which is the solver for this kind of static analysis job and then it completed successfully so we right click on that to look at the results okay right click on that to look at the results so i'm going to press on this plot contour plot button so that it can show me the result 
um, of my simulation. So everything looks all right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off some of those comments on the viewport. So if you go to the top here and click viewport, viewport annotation options, and I'll tick off the compass. I like the triad, which is the the reference frame. The legend is fine, so I'm going to leave, leave off, tick off all that, and click OK. So this is just to make the, my workspace a little bit cleaner. So I'll remove this in place. So it looks okay. It's what you would expect. It's a uniform distribution of stress in the domain within this compression test, and they are all 40 mega pascal because this is the yield stress that we impose on the sample. So this is fine. You can also do a comparison between this. So if we press and hold this button, press and hold, and while holding, you slide the mouse until you get to select this other one. So you're looking at it, both the contour plots in the two reference frame, both the form that form the form. So that's what you see here, both the form that form the form is the reference frame. So if we look at the view from the top perfectly, I will turn off perspective. So if I turn off perspective so that I'm looking square directly on top. Okay, so something has happened which is not ideal, so it's not working well. Um, because you see it's sliding to one side it's sliding to one side um, so if we reduce the speed at which this simulation is happening you know this animation the speed of the animation the frame rate of the animation so if I turn it down a bit so you can see what's happening is the sample seems to be moving in one direction if we look at the view from the top in the, so you can see the same thing it seems to be moving in one direction we can exaggerate that by going here and clicking on that button so this will give you this window which is a common plot option so our deformation scale instead of being one so let's say we we'll make it three so it will even exaggerate the situation so you can see everything seems to be moving this way and this vertical point is there so it's sliding in one direction which is not ideal and this was because we we forgot to impose uh, the center line reference frame so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in my boundary conditions so I need an extra boundary condition at the moment the two boundary conditions we have is the loader support at the base the loading at the top but we need to also impose a boundary so let's double click on boundary condition and and look for where we need to so I'm going to call this the fixed center line Okay, so fixed center line, and it's going to be an initial step based on a displacement condition continue. Okay, so now it's right inside, but I can't see it. So because I've created a set for that, so I'm going to go to this and click set. So this will bring up the set window, and I know that there is a center line, so I click here to highlight what I've selected in the viewport select the center line option which is that so you can say so i'm associating this to that set so you continue now how do i want to constrain it i want it to be free to grow in the z axis which is the direction of testing so that means all the other direction and angles i will constrain them so now this is the right way to show so the center line has been um, has been constrained so as this material is expanding it will be expanding diametrically expand radially at, along this center line so it's a constrained center line so um, we just resubmit based on that so I resubmit again based on that particular simulation I do not show that one in next time and now have an updated case one simulation with the center line in place so we we'll wait for this to run okay this mission has completed so let's look at the result so this is now a result with the center line um, fixed properly and now everything looks all right so it looks correct so if you look at the animation so you can see it's expanding um, concentrically outward in a nice and uniform way 
Okay, so it's expanding concentrically in a nice and open way, in, in every way. So if you look at the other views, so you could see it's effectively expanding as you expect in both directions. So if we go to the end, so everything looks expanding properly. Um, and this is because we've imposed the right boundary condition with that center line fixed and everything is dynamically expanding. So if you're ever going to do a simulation, um, a, a, a compression testing, this would be the way to go about it. Uh, to set up the model in such a way that you have the actual uniform uh, linear cell deformation. So this is an ideal, ideal case, an ideal case where there's a, a good lubrication at the top, good lubrication at the bottom. But what happens when we're looking at the case two, where this is not the case? So what we're going to do is I'm going to inherit the information we have for model one. So I'm going to copy model one and make it into model two. So this will be for my case two scenario. And I'll just go to the boundary condition. So really what we need is the boundary condition for the loaded support at the base. So the roller supported at the base. So we're looking at the case where the system is fixed is poorly lubricated at the base. So what's what's going to happen with if it's poorly lubricated at the base? And now at the moment, what we have is it's only roller supported in the X. So we need to basically constrain the top and probably all the rotational element. So it's fixed in securely at the base. So now if under this new scenario, we double click there. So what we notice is that it's creating the job for us. So this is called test case two, and it's using our second model, not our first model, second model. Continue. Okay, and then you click. Okay, so we have that, and then I can submit that job. Submit. Perfect. So while that job is running, I can create the third model case. So the third model case, so it's still submitting that job. So if we go up there, um, so when I click on the model, so if I minimize this window, so I right click here and copy the model. So this time around, I want the model to be model three. Okay. So if we look at model three and then go right, again, what we want is to change the way the boundary conditions at the top. So case three, the roller support at the base is now securely fixed. The load at the top needs to also change. So if you double click on the load at the top, so at the moment the load is free to move down and there is freedom. It's only moving down, but we don't know what happens in the X and Y axis or the one and two axis and the rotational plane. So why not let's fix those ones and make them all zeros so that they are not allowing any movement in that direction. So we click OK. So that's what we change. We change the load top and then we can come back here, double click on that to create the third job case for case three. So this will be comp test um, case three. Continue that and then click OK. So I'm going to right click and submit this job to run as well. Okay, so I've submitted both jobs. So case two is running, case three is running. So we'll allow it to run and both of them, and then we'll come back and visualize the results. Okay, so both jobs, case one and case two, have been completed. And so let's visualize the result for case one first. So this is where the base is badly lubricated. It's not even lubricated at all. And the only the top is free to move. So what happens? So again, you look at the results. So look at the vertical view of it. So if we don't stand it up vertically um, in this direction. So you could see, interestingly, we start seeing this effect of barreling. So the base is fixed securely, it's not expanding laterally, and then you end up having an, a widening, kind of like a fan shape effect. Um, and that's because of the concept of barreling that you see due to the effect of poor lubrication. And, and, and that's what we see with this, with this case. 
um, the stress histories are different as well so what of the case 3 so this case 3 clearly is a case where there's bad lubrication at the top bad lubrication at the bottom at the base and it's a, it's, a, it's a wrong way of designing this kind of specimen so what do we see all right so if you look at the vertical again view of this so there's a clearly formed barrel so when we say there's a barreling effect this is what you see a barreling effect and if we do the animation as well so you end up having the top contract con contracting the base and um, fixed and there's a clear formation of a barrel um, and so when they said you want to do when your supervisor or let's say an industry boss decide asks you to do a compression test and say applies enough lubricant this is really what they want to prevent so that you don't end up with a barreling effect and this barreling is not a good thing you know because the strain especially is not uniform and your strain need to be at least uniform across the sample so this area is expanding a lot and these regions are not expanding a lot so the stresses as well are not uniform so if we do a cut on the sample so we'll do a cut so i use this button to create the cut so you can see what is showing us here that there isn't a lot of expansion at the top and the bottom and because it's constrained although this region seems quite all right but this is a problem because it basically means that the stress is not uniform in the domain and so your 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 compression data would not be correct will not be will not be ideal because for it to be a representative of true compression the stress history across the sample will have to be exactly the same but that's not what we see here so this is this is really the essence of this video to kind of show you the impact of designing your specimen well running a simulation where you are not you know where you've lubricated the sample properly and, and extracting extracting you know visual information and albeit in this case of what sample you're going to see of the behavior the compressive behavior of the sample we can go ahead and under viewport just to compare all three cases so under the viewport at the top i'll create one viewport again and then there's a second one so i'll create another one viewport create so i've got three viewports available then i now go to viewport and tau maybe i could tau horizontally i could tau vertically okay so if we decide to tau horizontally so we've got all three sharing the same three cases so what one why not if we click on the first one i'll make it case one and the second one i'll make it case two and obviously the third one we know is case three so there's nothing we can do about that case three so i could then select if you go to viewport and link all viewports so if i link all viewports so that the behavior i will see will be the same in all cases okay so so that's what we see so i can take this out um and and you get with the last case okay so if we do the animation again So we've got three cases and we have slightly different responses in them so what happens if we align them vertically all of them all, you know, this way so you can see what's happened that there's a clear barrel here the barrel begins to form somewhere around there and this is obviously the best kind of simulation in the end so this is kind of what what, what we are interested in so what if i tile up these things vertically Okay, so this probably will be the better way to show this result um, and then you begin to see what's happening I mean what, what I could do is I could take away the legend so view annotation options just take away the legend or maybe minimize the legend so if I make the legend text really small okay so and then we could animate the system again okay so you see the three cases that tells you something is going wrong and um, depending on how the boundary conditions are, are, are chosen so it's not it's not ideal to have it in that way so 
if we look at the frame views okay so these are cut views and unfortunately it's in a different reference frame so if we look here okay um so this yes so this is this is a nice a nice way to look at all these results so ideal case uh, the second case where you have a uh, fixed at the bottom and there's not a lot of lateral expansion so you already see the concept of barreling and the third case is a clear barrel in the sample so this is the essence of, of what i wanted to talk about in this video and i hope that you found this really you know useful or if this is the kind of content that you like um, please do subscribe to my getting started with modeling channel and um, also press the notification button so that when contents like this are created you'll be the first to see it so thank you very much for your interest in this channel and i wish you the best thank you bye